Hello and welcome to my Azure Quick Hits video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to enable NSXT firewall logging so that you can find and query those logs in Azure Log Analytics. So here's our standard lab. Today we're focusing on the network traffic between these two guys and this one and how to send those logs up to Log Analytics up here. To get started, log into the Azure portal and go to your Azure VMware solution SDDC. Select Diagnostic Settings and then either Add Diagnostic Settings or in my case I've already got it set up, you can click on Edit. Uh, audit, that tracks all of the VMware solution um, tasks that take place on the vCenter. All logs will automatically enable syslog and all metrics. So syslog is the one we're really interested in here. Choose a log analytics workspace, right? or if you haven't built one, you'll have to build one first. You have to add one first and then select it here and then click on save. Right? I've made no choices, so I'm just going to X out of it. Now let's choose our log analytics workspace. Here it is. And we're going to go to logs, close this window for the moment, and do a group by resource type. It can take up to five minutes when you enable diagnostics on AVS before you see this pop up. But once you do, you're going to see the AVS private cloud, and you're going to see AVS syslog. Right? And at this point, we could actually find some of the sort of core syslog information that surfaces. So if we just double click on this and type run, you're going to see all the syslog events that have been generated in the last 24 hours. If I just turned on diagnostics, you might only see a few. Looking back at our environment, we're going to send some traffic from the VM on VLAN 1 to the VM in VLAN 3. And the same thing for VM on VLAN 2 to VMs on VLAN 3. And then we're going to build some firewall rules and track them down in the Log Analytics workspace. Switching over to my jump box, we have the VM on VLAN 1 here and the VM on VLAN 2. And they're both going to try and reach the VM on VLAN 3. So there's actually two of them. So the first one we'll do is 10. And the same thing over here. And then we'll also make sure we can reach 11, which are the two machines on VLAN 3. And the same thing from over here. Okay, so no problem. We have full ping capability between the two. Now we're going to switch over to my jump box and log into the NSXT console. Tagging is really important when we're setting up NSXT firewall rules. So the first thing we're going to do is check we've got some tags on our virtual machines. So click on inventory, click on virtual machines. I have my two backend servers from VLAN 03. Click on the three ellipses here and click on edit. And we're going to see here this one's got a, uh, a tag of backend and it's a server type. I don't believe we've got one on the other one, so let's go down to backend server two, click on edit. And we don't, as you can see here, we don't have any tags. So we're going to call this one uh, just backend server. and it's going to fill in the server type. It picked that out of the list because we already had it defined in server one here. And then click on save. Now you'll notice that when we look at these guys, each one of them has one tag. If we go down to my web servers, I'm just going to show you what the tags we set up there. We have two tags. We have one called web server server type and then web app 01 server type. So a way of distinguishing both this individual server, web app 01, which is running on web server 01, as well as one that we can group between uh, this one and web server 02. So let's cancel that and take a quick look. And you're gonna see this guy's called web server as well. And he's, he's also got a tag web app 02. So this allows us to do micro segmentation in the NSXT firewall. And you're gonna see this is gonna become really important in a few minutes. The next thing we're gonna look at is groups. And so here we're gonna create a new group for our new policies and rules and we're going to call that demo backend. When we click on set, so membership criteria, we go to add a criterion. We're going to be adding virtual machines. And in this case, we're going to use the tag, right? And so the tag name equals, and then you're going to see a list of different tags we had. So remember we called these one, we had a tag called backend on them. All right, and then we're going to apply that, and then we're going to click save. So now we have a group that has a criteria with the criteria matching tag backend, and you can see here, virtual machines, there are two virtual machines with that tag that show up under the view members. Now you'll notice we also have the group web servers, and if we look at that and edit it, we're gonna see it has one criteria. The criteria here is tag equals, and remember the tags we assigned to those web servers was web server. We also had two other tags that were available. One was web server 01, and that was just applied to web server 01, and web server 02, and that tag was just applied to web server 02 but this tag was applied to both. So I'll click on apply, click on save. 
All right, so now we've reached the point where the magic happens. We can click on security, click on distributed firewall, and the first thing we need to do is add a policy. So we'll create a new policy, and we're gonna call that one demo policy, and we're gonna publish it, which is effectively a save. It's not doing anything yet, it's just a policy. Now, let's edit this policy and add a rule. And so the first rule, we're gonna call this first rule, and the sources we're gonna choose, and this is where the group becomes so important, is web servers. So we're gonna do web servers to backend servers. So the source is gonna be web servers, apply, and the destination is going to be backend servers. Actually, I think we called it demo backend for ours, didn't we? Demo backend server, apply. The services, do we have any services defined? So we don't have a specific service. We have to choose which one we want. So in this case, let's block RDP. So we're going to do a search for service RDP. Select it. Click apply. And apply to the distributed firewall. And we're going to change the action to drop. And so now we're going to go to the left-hand side here. Click on the three ellipses. And click on enable logging for all rules. You have to do that for each policy so that all the rules in that policy are actually logged. Otherwise, when you go into the log analytics and you type in, you search for firewall, you're not going to see anything. The last thing we want to do here, and this is really important because if we don't do this, it's going to be hard to find that rule in the log analytics workspace. So click on settings and put a log label. And so what we're going to do here is call it the rule, which is first rule. And I'm going to put in the policy it applies to. So this one's going to be demo policy. Click on apply and publish. Now, one thing I've noticed a few times is it's important to do this. You click on progress and just make sure it's actually succeeded in publishing. So changing back to my jump box and I have sessions opened with the server on the web server on VLAN one and the web server on VLAN two. If I now open up an RDP session and I'm going to connect to the server on the backend server on VLAN three, it fails. And the same thing is true, of course, from this side as well. If we go to the RDP session, click on connect, it's going to fail. All right, so how do we know that the rule is actually doing this? Well, let's just, we can let those time out. In the meantime, we'll go back to our NSX and over here under distributed firewall on the far right hand side, there's an enable disable rule button. So let's turn this to disabled and then publish it. Okay, now go back to the jump boxes. And we'll just close this to cannot connect windows. Okay. Okay. And now if we click on connect, it works. All right. So let's say we weren't sure which rule was causing the problem because we might have dozens of policies and hundreds of rules. And this is where we're going to switch to log analytics and take a look and see what's going on. And you're also going to see why we had those tags added to the rule. Switching back to the Azure portal, open up your log analytics workspace and click on logs. Under queries, change the category to resource type and then select AVS private cloud. Here you will see one called get distributed firewall logs. So run that and we're going to make a couple of changes here. First, change the time range to last hour. And then actually we're gonna remove this or proc ID equals firewall because those are mostly administrative tasks. They're not firewall rule specific. So what we want is where app name equals firewall. Let's rerun that. And now let's take a look at these logs. First, let's just minimize the screen a bit so we can get more of the log on the actual screen here. And then open one up, the top one for instance. And we're gonna look here and see under the message type, there's where we had the rule drop Here's the source IP address, the target IP address, and where we put our tags in, the first rule of the demo policy. If we were searching to figure out what was going wrong between one machine and another, we could do a search something along the lines of AVS syslog where app name equals firewall and message contains the source IP address. So click on run. And we're gonna get the same result, but now we've made it more specific, right? So we're looking for a particular source machine. And again, we can see the tags we put in against that rule, first rule of the demo policy. All right, that pretty much wraps up the video. If you have any questions or queries, please put them in the comments section below. Hope you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next video.